Hey! You're talking to my guy all wrong. It's the wrong tone. Do it again. I'll stab you in the face with a soldering iron. <laughs> rotation of the sun not just a clockwise wagon wheel rotation okay so i'm going to hit play here oops sorry we'll start here may 30th now i was observing in the morning and when you're observing the sunspots in the morning you are going to see them picture a clock a face of a clock you're going to see the sunspots moving from the eight o'clock position up to the two o'clock position when you're observing the sun in the morning in the northern hemisphere okay and then we're going to see it then rotate uh, clockwise due to uh perspective and we'll get into that but all of my data has lined up with soho the solar Hel heliospheric observatory it lines up with their quote quote unquote space-based telescopes right their satellites that we all know are real now because they're using a centered earth fixed earth coordinate system we don't need to be going out there and saying that satellites are fake uh, the same reason we don't need to be saying sunspots are fake. I think this actually benefits us the same way we, we, we have realized that satellites have now benefited us. All right. So, yeah, it lines up the placement and timing, like the timing of the coronal mass ejections and the placement of these sunspots all line up. Now, I'm not dooming and glooming. I'm not saying it's going to destroy the Earth. It's not. This is just a cycle it's going through. We are in the solar maximum. That's why a lot of you are experiencing heat waves right now. And, you know, a lot of their data is lining up with my observations. I was tracking a sunspot around June 8th or the 6th, and I was noticing and expecting a coronal mass ejection. And sure enough, there was a massive one, I believe, June 8th. So, yeah, I can also pretty much tell time by looking at the placement of the sunspots, depending on where that person took the picture on the plane of the Earth. But yeah, you can see here uh, that little dot. That's, I think, Mercury or Venus because they're always close to the sun. You can also see star, the stars going across. And speaking of stars, I will say that the sunspots are not stars seen through the sun. I do not think the sun is a projection. I think it is a spherical object based off my observations. You can see here on the right, this is one sunspot, just a different day. And the amount of time it takes us, the stars to move across the sky is way too fast when compared to the amount of time we see one sunspot on the face of the sun. I've seen those three major sun. Oh, there went that massive CME that happened on the 8th that I was just mentioning. Um, but yeah, you can see that the sunspots are on the face of the sun way too long when compared to the amount of time the stars are moving across the sky, obviously. And then also I went and checked and none of those stars line up on any of those videos that people are tagging me in. So, you know, start doing your own observations and, yeah, things like that, you know. But, yeah, CMEs, they could be highly energetic plasma discharge. I think the sun is plasma. I think the sunspots are caused by the twisting of the sun's electromagnetic fields or, like, a concentration point of these electromagnetic fields. And, of course, it's all speculation off of what I've read, you know, but it's also going along with my observations. And I don't think this footage here is fake. I think it's legit, Okay. I understand they lie about where we are, but I think um, when it comes to observations, they really depend on a lot of backyard astronomers, right? I mean, a lot of this information was already here before NASA was even thought of. They've adopted information that was uh, um, that is from our ancestors before us, right? Who knew this whole realm? They knew, you know, that we got the anti-Kathirin mechanism, we got the Soros cycle. None of that was created by globe earthers, okay? So this is our sky clock in the sky, the most important clock. We have clocks on our wrist, clocks on our screen, but no one's paying attention to the actual clock in the sky. And since I have been, it's been an amazing journey, and I've learned so much, and I've come to a better understanding of this realm, and it's freaking beautiful, just got to say. Um, 
I would like to get some people in the Southern Hemisphere. I know someone who's doing it now, but we need more observations, the more the merrier. Okay, so we have two motions of the sun, a clockwise wagon wheel rotation on the face of the sun due to my perspective. Again, in the morning, I'm facing east. High noon, I'm facing south. In the evening, I'm facing west. But we are also experiencing another movement, which is the counterclockwise rotation on an axis. And you can see this by tracking sunspots throughout the month. Now, if you're observing the sunspots between near the tropics, right? If you live near the tropics, you're observing the sunspots, you will see that the sun takes about 25 to 27 days for one rotation. Okay. And these are just the motions you can see. Again, you are observing the wagon wheel movement along with a spinning on an axis. Okay. And I'm going to keep doing these observations. Uh, I think more of us should be doing these observations. Less YouTube video watching and more observations. You know what I mean? But yeah, here is also an example of the wagon wheel rotation throughout the day. You can see as it's approaching solar noon, it's rotating. Now the sunspots are moving left to right. And then in the evening, the sunspots are now going from the 11 o'clock position down to the 5 o'clock position. Right? All my observations are in the morning, <coughs> so that's why my sunspots we're moving from the eight o'clock position up to the two o'clock position. But yeah, see, so seven in the morning, eight in the morning, got nine in the morning, 10 in the morning. These are between the dates of 616 and 627. You got 11 and now it is noon. It is getting closer to solar noon right here. Look at that. And now we are going into the afternoon and it has completed its clockwise rotation. But we are also experiencing a counterclockwise rotation, ladies and gentlemen. I got 99 sun shots, but I hate it. I got none. <laughs> yeah, that was a cool video you had done there. You know, seeing all those shots put together. Yeah, my, so I don't know if you noticed in that video, if I, I'll send you a sped up version of it, right? I'll send you a, a faster version. And when you see the tail end, you look at the dates as we're going into August um, and now into September. Yeah, I'm seeing a counterclockwise rotation pretty drastic so far and I'm, I'm excited to see what it looks like at the end of the month um, because it's it's wagon wheeling for sure it's not the same eight to one it, not at all it's basically six to twelve <laughs> like the sunspot rotation coming from the six o'clock position up to the twelve o'clock right. it's damn near vertical that's interesting. Yeah, I don't know what to make of it. 
And then, you know, I'm still getting that salt, my solar noon, I'm still getting the left to right. So there, so it's almost like the wagon wheel effect has become greater, almost. I was going to say like more pronounced, like a quicker rotation almost. Uh, so more of a thing. rotation, actually. Uh, yeah. A greater lo- rotation because at the original position, 8 to 2, now it's actually counterclockwise back a bit to where it's almost 6 to noon. And then it's still having to do a complete rotation to level out at my solar noon. And then so this evening, if I can get that shot, I wonder if it's going from also about the 6 to noon position. That would mean the rotation's greater, right? It's doing more of a rotation throughout the day. I don't know. It's weird. Maybe I'm thinking about it wrong. You know, it's one of those things you know you need to draw out because I know when we did our last kind of close sun shot that just happened by chance. Um, yeah, you know it's yeah, like and yours was backwards. Weird. Yeah, it looks weird. It's kind of like you know it reversed in time, went forward in time, and and so yeah, these things. See, that's like, the thing. What draw. time? Sorry, but what time <laughs> was it? See, that that's so weird, dude. Because then you got the whole time zone thing and just. Uh, yeah, it gets weird because we did it at the same time, but it was still a different time of the day for us individually. You know, it was a different time for you versus the time of day for me. Yeah, it was a different time of day. Um, but as far as if we were to convert time, those photos were only a half hour apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that, but I'm saying location wise. You know what I mean? Because you're a couple hours ahead. Yeah. So the sun was me. just rising for me. Right. So been... I wonder if, see, yeah, I don't know. It makes me feel. So mm-hmm. there's a few things. Yeah. We've got perspective is one thing. And then we have, you know, how the sun moves is another. Like there's a few factors that would definitely have to be all considered to accommodate for that wagon wheel effect. Hey, Rockcast Digital. So I got another thing. Uh, we've been shooting some sun with uh, people from kind of all over the world. And uh, this morning we got pretty close to getting a, a teamed up uh, photo shoot. And so what I'll bring up on the screen here, as you see, is going to be two images. First, I'll bring you this one. So this morning at 6.03, that was the shot from my place. And that would be at 12.03 UTC time. All right, now I'm over up in uh, kind of the western Canada, and the other gentleman's down in Florida, and got his photo at 8.36, which is 12.36 UTC time. So we were off just by about a half hour. We didn't even plan it, but, uh, you know, it's what happens when you get up and snap photos before getting the day going, getting to work, and doing the schooling. Um, So, yeah. I took an advantage, a chance here, so we could take a look at the sunspots and maybe get a better idea of what's happening uh, with this luminary. Uh, as we already know, uh, all the work that the Melodome has done uh, regarding filming and tracking the sunspots, its rotations, um, for 40 days and counting, is the sunspots throughout the day will rotate in a clockwise direction, so like a wagon wheel movement of the luminary um, due to perspective as it uh, comes into our personal dome and then out again. Now, he's also recorded the sunspots going from, let's say, that uh, roughly 7, 8 o'clock up to about the 1, 2 o'clock direction at an angle that rotate around the actual body. Um, So there is some dynamic movements that we do need to consider regarding the luminary. And one of them that we are going to consider is, seeing as I kind of got my photo off first at 12.03 UTC time, we will show you what uh looks like right there so this here would be 1236 utc shot from the boat central florida okay and as i then lay mine on which was shot earlier by about a half hour from my more westerly and northerly location we already see that this uh, sunspot has on a wagon wheel okay so my sunspots already pointing pretty much down to eight o'clock 
Yeah, click and draw buttons. And the one from Florida is pretty much pointing straight at six o'clock. So we already have almost 15, 20 degree kind of split going on um, over a half hour, which those wagon wheel effect is probably just a little under that. Something that we do need to measure and look into. However, with mine being the earlier time, why is the Florida actually counter rotated like it's going back in time? whoa so you know the old saying that we all have our own personal view of the sun um has some merit to it and depending on where you are you have a different view and different layout of those sunspots compared to another observer so some more stuff that we're going to dig into uh follow austin the melodome you can find him on Telegram as well as on YouTube and Rockfin. Uh, he does an excellent job and uh, he'll be sharing some of the photos and the findings as well as we further unravel the luminaries over our heads in this realm. Hey guys, uh, here's just my sunspot simulator. So what you see is the sun, you see the sunspots and as we advance through the day, the sunspots have a clockwise rotation to the face, the wagon wheel, right? And we can go back in time. So let's say my friend somewhere down in Florida takes a photo and it's like, so, well, here's my longitude slider. So I'm going to move myself west. And we see the sunspots due to my perspective change. If we went more east of his direction, you see how they would change. And of course, latitude won't make much of a difference at all as far as the rotation of those sunspots. So, oh, we're just learning and plucking away. Dude, you've been doing some great work in regards to actually looking at the sky. And yeah, doing dude. Own... It's been um, ruffling some feathers. That's for sure. It's kind of supposed um, to, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's ruffled my own damn feathers, bro. <laughs> you know? I, you know, uh, since it's Equinox, maybe I can find a way to get it up on screen. Let me grab it. But, uh, you know, I've been getting daily shots of the sun. And uh, you know how they've always taught us that um, the Equinox is just the seasons, the changing of the seasons is due to a 23.5 degree tilt of the earth, right? Well, I have documented a 23.5 degree tilt of the sun. And it's the equinox. I saw your video on that, yeah. Now, now, now that's like when the kinematics comes in, right? Like, is it the sun tilting? Is it, is it the earth tilting? You know what I mean? And it, it's just, it's been crazy journey, dude. And just observing that for myself tells me there is some type of truth to that to this 23.5 degree tilt
It could be 23.4 degrees. It could be. Here, I'm going to pull up the video. A measurement like that is not necessarily easy to actually no. measure super accurately. I had so. to put a 23, I, lay, I overlaid a 23.5 degree angles over my sun shots. And what you're going to observe is the, uh, what would be solar noon every day. Boom, 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 boom. And you're going to start seeing it as the months go through. You'll eventually start seeing a tilting because again, you asked me, I think the sun's physical rotating on an axis, a rotating sphere, ah, spheres in the sky. All right. So what I'm about to show you is I started May 30th and this isn't up to today. This is up to, uh, what, like, I think just like two days ago because I think up to two days ago, cause I haven't made a new video adding these two extra few days, but you will start seeing the tilt that I'm trying to explain to you guys. All right, so it's going into um, August. You're starting to see it tilt, right? You're seeing it now in September. Let me slow it down. Oh, what the hell? But yeah, if you guys just watch closely, you'll see at the beginning in May, May 30th, all the way into May, June, July, August, around... The end of July and August, you'll start seeing the tilt. It starts, the face of the sun is rotating counterclockwise. Right now, you're seeing it right now. It's starting to rotate and tilt. Now we're in August, tilting more. Look at that. It's tilting now. Am I crazy? Am I seeing things? Now we're starting back over. No, I don't think you're crazy, but using the term rotation might be mostly accurate. However, the patterns rotational persist. what? Well, the patterns repeat; they persist, and in what, what do you, mean you would they consider yeah, a they repeat from. Of... Say again. What do you mean repeat? What do you mean the pattern repeats? Well, the sunspots. They're not repeating. It's looping from May to now. You're just seeing it start over back in May, May 30th. Those are all different sunspots. I just documented a sunspot forming on the face of the sun, literally formed overnight. And then a second one formed just above it. Um, but am I, does anybody see this? Am I, am, am I tripping here? Or are we noticing okay, well, that in, in it's my, tilting? What I just said is that the spots may be repeating such as if they are indeed spherical, that means they're moving in a circular motion around an axis. So how can you say that the sun is actually moving and that the sunspots are not repeating? Maybe I'm a little lost. On... What do you mean? How could they repeat if you see them form and dissipate? How are they repeating? I don't get it. Well, yeah, right at the exact same time. How can you say it's rotating? And Well, does it not look like it's rotating? It does, but... Well, what else would it look like? Hmm. I, I mean, from, from an observational standpoint, Andrew, does this not look like a rotating sphere? It, yeah, the appearance does. Yeah, from an observational standpoint, right? And then with even better equipment like what Crow has. And then following Soho, I know people are like, it's all fake. But Soho shit lines up with mine. And Crow's. Crow's explosions that come off the surface, I'm predicting when, it, um, when I uh, 
when I'm looking at a region that they're talking about that's on the backside coming around the limb of the sun, right? I'm already tracking it. Let's give it a number, you know, like uh, 3780 or 3828. You know, that's one of the newer ones that just popped up these mm -hmm. past couple of days. So that'll be a region I'm tracking, thinking it's going to freaking shoot something out any day, which and I had that equipment to document it. And then Crow has literally documented said explosion that I was thinking was going to happen eventually to a point where I'd even write Rose and say, hey, Rose, I hope Crow's out there because I think this thing's about to freaking explode something. And then a few hours later, she's like, oh, he caught it. Oh, my gosh, he's going to work on it and, and get the footage out. So if you guys are subscribed to Crow 7 Radio, go check it out. All his sun footage is amazing, you know. There's something else I wanted to show. But that's what I mean. Like, from an observational standpoint, what are we going to... Because, like, this one guy who's doing observations, he's... I mean, from an observational standpoint, it looks like a rotating sphere. But then he wants to tell me I'm wrong because it's actually an hourgla hourglass-shaped focal point of light. Okay, try to prove that, dude. Like, we're not observing that. Let's. Oh, but you're looking at the bottom part of the hourglass-shaped focal point of light. And you're looking at the bottom part of the toroidal field. And I'm like, dude, from an observational standpoint, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to, like, add any fantasies to this or what I think. Like, I'm really trying to stay objective as possible. Yeah, I've dude, what you're doing right now is more than a lot of people in Flat Earth have ever done. And it's commendable. I respect it a lot. But you have to understand that... If anyone's going to come to you and ask any questions, you may not actually have the answer to that question because they've never done it. It's the first time they've seen it. Even Globert. Yeah, this is all new to me. Dude. Thing. Yeah. And please don't think I'm attacking you at all. Okay, I'm just no, asking man, I don't. No, 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 I don't. I don't at all. I want to be challenged. I mean, I challenged myself. That's how I got here. Okay, where, where, where is it? Nick, explain what you're seeing when you say it's tilting. I'm missing something. All right, so what you're about to observe, we are starting right here, May 30th. This is the date, okay? And it's going into June, which is the summer solstice, right? And the sunspots are moving from left to right, right at the center, at what we would call the equator of the sun, right? Some are up here, some will be down here. But they're all moving from left to the right side of the face, right? And as the months go by, from May, June, July, August, mind you, this sun is rotating, and one rotation takes about 25 to 27 days. So it's rotating. And as we're going through the months, you're going to start to see it, the face, rotating counterclockwise. Okay, and it's going to rotate to where this, the, the rotation is like this, but then come September, it's rotating at an angle. There's been a 23.5 or 23.4 degree tilt. There's something. And my prediction is come winter solstice, it's going to level back out. And then come next equinox in March, it's going to tilt the other way. And then come the other solstice, it's going to level back out. We're going to see this wobble effect. So now, instead of me stopping at the winter solstice, I have to keep going until next May. So I can have a, a whole year time lapse of this freaking sun. So thanks a lot, Harmon. This is all your fault if you're listening. <laughs> Sending me this camera and sending me on this freaking journey. All right, there's something else I wanted to show. What was it? Um, man, there was something out about the sun observations that I wanted to show. And I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Wait. I got to find it. Because I can show you these the sunspots forming on the face of the sun because there's I keep getting met comments on my videos of like, people are so confident that sunspots are stars seen through the sun. They're, they're star constellations seen through the sun. I know this because I went to Stellarium. No, you didn't. You didn't go to Stellarium. I know you didn't because I did. 
it doesn't work. Other people have, it doesn't work, right? The stars move too fast across the sky when you compare them to the amount of, t amount of days you see the same sunspots on the face of the sun. You'll see the same sunspots for days. The star, the stars will be long gone. All right. So these are morning shots. So they're going to be the, this is going to confuse people. I know this is because the sunspots are going to be coming from the bottom up to the top. But we have to remember that the sun is wagon wheeling clockwise, right? The face of the sun is wagon wheeling cl clockwise across the sky, right? So it's like wagon wheeling in the sky from the morning up to solar noon, because in the morning you're facing east. And then during sol solar noon, when you're observing the sun, you want to face south. And then in the evening you're facing west. So you are turning yourself in three different directions, which is causing a perspective change. All right. So let me pull this video up. And what this is showing you is these are like the past three days. You're going to see a sunspot form. All right. So you're going to see here's this. I'm viewing this in the morning about nine in the morning. So instead of the sunspots coming from left to right right here. It'd be more like this because right now we're September. So it's angled, right? Set them coming from here up to here. I'm viewing it in the morning. So they're coming from right here up, basically going straight up. Now, now remember back in May and June, they were going from the eight o'clock position, seven o'clock position up to the one o'clock position in the morning, right? They were going like this, but now they're going basically from the six o'clock up to the 12 o'clock position because there's a 23 point something degree tilt that's causing that and then it's gonna move back come winter solstice but anyways all right so let me pull this picture up really quick sorry kind of all over the place while i'm explaining it probably so this is sunspot 3825 okay this one is 3827 this region is 3828 and has grown in size since it's moved up all right so now there's nothing right here right there's nothing here so that means there's no stars that you can see through the sun right now watch there's one day it's going to move second day, next day, boom. What's that? Very next day, sunspot region 3831 comes up, pops out of nowhere. There is nothing there. There's nothing there. We'll go back. So there's nothing right here. Okay. Come out the next morning. Boom. There's something there. Come out the next day. Boom. Ooh, even bigger. Two days ago, that thing was that sunspot was non-existent. Okay. So what did a star just appear through the sun? Huh? But do you guys see that? So you're going to see it. Hold on. Let me back it up. Just go through the days. Five by five. Cool. You're going to see right in the center of the sun. You're going to see a sunspot up here. There it is. And then the next day it gets bigger. Boom. Even bigger. So that proves they're not star constellations seen through the sun. Or we're seeing a star explode through the sun. I don't think so. I don't think so. 
I added a few more days into post because you could see this sunspot region growing on the face of the sun. Now my question is, if we're seeing the sunspots form and grow on the face of the sun, then how are they stars being seen through the sun? Okay, what are we seeing? A star explode? I don't think so. Sunspots are not star constellations seen through the sun. This right here proves that. All of it's like twisting, you know? Like even when a lot of the flares and stuff, uh, when you look at the footage from some great shots with uh, hydrogen alpha telescopes like crows, uh, there there's even like a vortex motion of the flares coming off of the sun. It's pretty wild. I mean, because I'm, I'm going to go to the group where it's called solar activity. And it's just a lot of people in their backyard with this similar equipment to uh, Crow 777, a hydrogen alpha telescope. Um, and they're all getting shots of the sun. And no, I don't think they're faking it because a lot of their shots is exactly what Crow is getting. And those and the sunspots are in the same location where they would be for me, you know, depending on our locations. But we can figure that out. You know, I'm it's pretty freaking cool. So yeah, pretty cool. It's all fake. I used to be like, it's fake. I used to do that. <laughs> Maybe some of you still think this is fake. That's all right though. You'll get there. <laughs> I was there myself. I was once that person. Look at this. That's pretty cool. Friday evening. Look at that shit just coming off of there. Can you guys see that? Look at that. That's crazy. And this looks exactly like what Crow be getting with his um, hydrogen alpha. <sighs> That's pretty cool. So here's uh, 3828. The one, this is one I was showing you that I've documented. These are just better. This is a better equipment. This is what I mean. This is why I want to create a GoFundMe and upgrade. I need better equipment. I need better shots. Look at that. Crow has caught stuff like this. He has shots just like this. So people are like, oh, it's all fake. I don't know. I don't think Crow's faking shots because he's literally getting the same locations on the face of the sun that others are getting, you know, because he's outside as much as I am. Look at that. That's wild. See, look at this. It's like going out, then in. It's like looping. Like it's a, and then some of it's vortex motion. Look at that. That's crazy. Look at that right there. Look at that. That's crazy, dude. And this is over like hours, right? This is a time lapse that's sped up. You know, this is, this takes a long time to collect. Tell me this thing is not alive. Look at that. Holy shit. This is great. Crow be getting shit like this, man. Oh my god, not like this. That was crazy. Look at all that. Let's see what you guys are saying. <laughs> Cartoons. <laughs> Dude, that is wild, man. You know how much dedication it takes to get this much footage?
Wow, dude. Look at this shit. This thing is alive. Talking to us, man. Physical as shit. That was awesome. There's more. I'm gonna have to watch this one more time. Five hours, September 13th. Dallas Tech. What, dude? Hold on. Hold on. Let's go back over here. Let's see. All right, let's check this out again. This is wild. Wow, dude. Look at that shit. That is amazing, man. And guess what? Crow was doing it on the 14th as well. If you go over there, he has like eight new videos of his sun observations. He has uh, footage of sun movement like this and explosions and he's catching things like he caught one that looked like a geyser just shooting out and lighting up you know and he's catching prominences like this on the edge because on the edge they're called prominences um when they are when they're like more on the on the limb they have a bunch of different names but they're all just basically explosions and energy coming off the sun off the sides they call them prominences uh there's filaments where there's like these dark loops that are connecting. They got CMEs. Look at that. That is amazing. See how they're arcing? A lot of it's just arcing, you know? Like electricity or magnetic fields, like iron filings following a magnetic field line. That's what they look like. Look at that. That's crazy. Hold on. I'm tripping. This is cool as shit. Look at that. Dude, that's crazy. Wild. It, it looks like nail, like uh, the magnetic filings, you know, those little files and you, you lay them on the paper with the magnet under it and it'll follow the magnetic field lines. It seems like that's what we're seeing here. Like this, this is a physical object to me. I don't think this is a projection through a firmament, through a dome. This is the real deal. Yeah, I could watch this shit for hours, dude. And it takes hours. Uh, a friend of mine who's doing observations and in the sun group, he just wrote me and said that his buddy who will be outside doing this kind of work will be, he'll pitch a tent and stay out in his tent in the driveway while he's doing these observations. Like that's dedication, dude. Let's see what else is here. Let's see what else is cool in here. There you are, Robert Hunt. Much love. Let's see what else we got. I know I'm going to get comments on this live stream like tomorrow. <laughs> you think this is all real? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> you think the sun's physical? The sun's apparent. Bro, just because something has an apparent position, just because... Just because you say it's apparent doesn't mean it's not physical. I can debunk that real quick. It's apparent. That means it's not physical. No, no. 
a parent doesn't mean that object is isn't physical. A physical object can have an apparent position. Look at that shit. That's crazy. And see, all their shots are looking similar. You know, on if they're getting shots on the same days, everybody in their backyard is catching the same shit. So, are they, is every, you know, backyard astronomer in, in on this shit? I don't know. I don't think there's built-in data in this shit. No, we gotta do better than that. Crow is not faking it. Crow 777. I'm confident he's not faking his images. He would never do something like that. So, that really puts a lot of credibility in, in these images in Hydrogen Alpha. And I, I want to grow uh, upgrade to this one of these. Something like this. All right. Let's pull this up on screen. All right. So this will start over. So this is a physical person. Physical person. Okay. He's physically in the pool. Look. Physical person. Apparent position. Would you look at that? Physical object, apparent position. Oh my gosh. So yes, a physical object can have an apparent position. Just because it has an apparent position doesn't mean it's a hologram or a projection or a reflection or refracting or melting or simulating. Okay. Physical object, apparent position. We all on the same page? Okay. So I hopefully I don't hear a comment. Get a comment. Because I, I see that a lot and you're incorrect. Stop saying that. That it's not physical because it's, it has an apparent position. That's not true. Okay. Because look, physical body, apparent position. Due to what? So... We got a huge atmos in between us and the sun. What's in between this guy? It's water. There, there's distortion, right? There's shit going on. Light refraction, right? So that's what's happening here. Now let me find the video I made. There is one video that Crow has shared. Let me go find it. Because he, he has released some of his work we can go to his crow triple seven radio telegram group there we go then we have these coming on around the bottom these have been very active past few days hopefully we can see some more activity and people like crow triple seven can get live shots of these explosions of these uh energy blast coming off the face of the sun he has already caught some of those live um literal sunspot regions i've been tracking and predicting it to explode and then crow actually documents the explosion so it's been really amazing like so cool dude yeah i don't know what the sun is either bro <laughs> i don't know either dude <laughs> Like, what is going on, man? <laughs> so fascinating. And, you know, I answer like one or two questions, but then in answering those creates 30 other questions that can't be answered. <laughs> so here's some footage from Crow that he has made public. One of the few shots. All right, so right here, you're going to see an explosion. Remember, oh, so it's going to come from right here, okay? And this is Crow 777's work. Amazing work, okay? He has way better footage than this on his website, okay? Check it out. You're going to see it right here. Boom, look at that. That was crazy, right? Let's go back.
Dude, like a geyser. And this is a region I was tracking. And everyone's predicting it was going to explode something. And then Crow catches it. And this isn't the first thing Crow caught. Crow has been catching a few um, activities on the sun. Some bursts. Let's watch one more time. Look at that. It's crazy. You even see it like over here too. Because it, it arcs, right? That, that would make sense. Like if these are arcing... Bam. So look, see it lights up over there. Because look, you come over here, it's gone. You see a spot appearing, right? So there's no spots. Look right there, barely nothing. And then you bump up to here. Now there's a spot showing. Nothing over here yet, but there's movement. And then to here. Look at that. And then when that bursts, this spot also like lit up. So I bet you we would see like if there's other angles, he could zoom in more, we would see more activity. I bet there is some type of arcing effect happening right here. Or with these two and then with that one, it's pretty wild. Boom. Man, that's crazy shit.